Greetings, fellow scribes! Welcome back to the Archive! This week, I continue my series on the Great Clans of Legend of the Five Rings by talking about the Mantis Clan. The Mantis, led by the Yoritomo family, do not believe quite like the rest of Rokugan. They are a clan of individuals, while most of the other clan, great clans are about conformity within the bounds of their families or within the bounds of their clan. This means telling the story of the Mantis is telling their history and how it was shaped by individuals and not really a group of stories about the different families. So with that said, sit back, relax, and enjoy as I talk about the Mantis Clan. To understand where the Mantis come from, you have to go back to the dawn of the Empire. The Kamihita, his first son, died on the Day of Thunder. Years later, his second son was born. His second son was the child of Hida and the Thunder Dragon. The second son was Osano Wo, who would eventually become the fortune of Thunder and Lightning. But, what's important is he also became the second champion of the Crab Clan. And he had two sons. One son was from his wife, his Matsu Bride. The other son was a bastard. Because when he found out the news of his wife becoming pregnant... He had much sake to celebrate. Too much sake. But, as these two children were growing up, the bastard lost every challenge to the Matsu, to the Matsu son, and kept trying. And when it came time for Osano Wo to choose which of his two sons would be named his heir, he passed over the elder son, the legitimate son, for his bastard child. And the reason why was while the lion son well, the Matsu-san won every challenge. That meant he never had never faced defeat. He was a perfect lion, but he was not a crab. The bastard son had everything stacked against him, and yet he still stood firm stood and challenged the elder, more prepared son. And that was the nature of what a crab was. And the Matsu bride was incensed. Insulted, even. And so, she took her son and a handful of loyal retainers between crab and lion, and went off. They went to the islands of silk and spice. Now these islands are a good bit, good bit offshore from the mainland of Rokugan. And when you have a number of retainers, their families. They ended up first creating a port. And eventually this would grow as the clan itself grew. 
But this was the start of the Mantis Clan. Now understand, yes, this does mean that the Mantis are descended directly from the God of Thunder. So think about that. Now, the Mantis consider themselves, at this time, the oldest minor clan in Rokugan. Even though they were not recognized for a couple centuries, they were still functioning as a clan. They had their own culture, their own traditions that were being formed. And so when they were recognized, they were recognized in such a way that they didn't have to do what other new minor clans do, of petition Ronin and cast-offs from the great clans to help bolster their numbers. And they had already started to develop their own schools, their own training methods. Now, at this point, the recognition of them was as the Gusai family, because that was the name of their champion when they were recognized. A couple centuries later, they kind of messed up and lost their recognition because they did this little stupid thing to try and bolster their image of kidnapping an imperial heir. But since they were on these islands far away from the mainland, it was just they were denounced, they lost their recognition, and a few of them were killed in a mostly token effort to go, yeah, we fixed this problem. But they still existed. And this is going to lead us to the events leading up to the second day of thunder. So, to understand your time, let's start with a key event from his childhood. His father was trading with Gaijin. This is, of course, an illegal act, automatically punishable by death in Rokugan. Now, whether his father was actually trading, trading with them, or whether he was getting knowledge from them, that's kind of iffy, that's not really gone into. Though, spyglasses are a thing that are known among the Mantis. And the Mantis Kobun use some non-Rokugani building techniques. Namely, they actually lay keels. They use ribbing. They don't use the mortise and tenon that the other Rokugani ships use. Well, except for the Tortoise Clan ships, but that's something else. But, it was discovered by Gurutomo's eldest brother that their father was trading with Gaijin. And so, he had a brilliant idea. He was going to hire assassins, kill his father, have one of the assassins pretend to be his father, then he would kill that assassin later, after revealing certain details, and so thus become the Mantis champion, and thus also protect the family honor, in a strange roundabout way. The problem is... You can't always trust assassins. The assassins killed 
Yoritomo's mother, his two other brothers, and the father. The assassin then, as he was hired to do, took over the role of pretending to be the current champion of the Mantis Clan, and raised Yoritomo as his own. And it was on Yoritomo's Gimpuku that his fake father revealed what had happened, and then killed himself, since Yoritomo could now take over the clan. Now, Yoritomo would eventually develop his own fighting style, a style involving a rolling sort of movement, using Kama and other peasant-style weaponry, but mostly Kama for Yoritomo. And that was significant for him. And that would eventually build upon the school and develop the Mantis Bushi school. But Yoritomo took over the clan. And he had a goal. He wanted the Mantis to be recognized as a great clan. He did not want to just be recognized as a minor clan, because remember, at this time, they are still not recognized even as a minor clan. And so he began alliance building. He began taking methods to get recognition from different people, that, you know, get favors that he can call in to help, and all this. He was careful. He built this alliance over years. And then events started happening. The Scorpion coup, the death of uh, Haunted the 38th, Hante the 39th, turning out to be Fu Lang, stuff like that. But while Toturi, Akoto Toturi, is off raising his armies and doing all that preparation, Yortomo is also calling his favors. He's getting Saruchi archers, he's getting Moshi Moshi Shugenja. Kitsune Shugenja are coming in to help. And they're fighting the Shadowlands. Because Shadowlands stuff is now coming up inside the Empire. And so they're attacking Shadowlands creatures in the Crane Lands and fighting all through the Empire, helping this war that's growing as Tuturi's gathering his forces. And then comes a critical day. You've reached the point where Everyone knows that Hante the 39th is actually Fu Lang. And that the Seven Thunders have gathered to do what's necessary to stop him. And you have the armies of all the great clans of Rokugan gathered. And they're ready to do their march to Otsanuchi, the imperial capital. And Yoritomo appears. Behind him is his full army. An army that is loyal to him. 
that he has earned their respect, he has earned their faith, he has earned their trust. And this army, while it can't beat the gathered army of the great clans, it could do so much damage to them that they could not beat Fulang's forces. And Yoritomo strides out and says, Tuturi, if you accept me, if you accept the Mantis as a great clan, I give you my army. If you refuse, if the champions of the great clans assembled refuse to recognize the Mantis as a great clan, then we will fight you. And the Hida Thunder, Hida Yakumo, laughed, not in mockery, but in admiration of this man's daring. Kikita, uh, Doji Hoturi's aide wanted to strike Yoritomo down for his insolence. But it was eventually decided by those gathered that this was the best course of action to take. To accept this offer. And Tutori made the concession that if any of your people survive, you will be accepted. And then they went off to the second day of thunder. Uh, Fu, Lang's, Fu Lang is trapped in the 13th Black Scroll. Yada, yada, yada. Tutori becomes the emperor. Big, big complex thing. But from that point, Yoritomo has cemented himself as the champion of a great clan. Now, there's a lot of other stuff that goes on after this. Um, the Yoritomo family and the Mantis play a big part in the war against the Lying Darkness. It's they that discover its weaknesses, its, its, its aversion to crystal, stuff like that, and even that it even exists, and that advisors to many of the clan champions were actually replaced by agents of the Lying Darkness. And at a big battle where the Lying Darkness actually comes out and reveals itself to Yoritomo and tries to tempt him to serve it, it makes him the offer that all he has to do is give up his name and it will grant him all the power he wants. And Yoritomo responds, that he has already given his name to his followers. And then he ends up fighting the Lying Darkness. He doesn't beat it at this point. That's much later. Again, Tori's involved by naming the Lying, Lying Darkness a Kodo, thus taking away its power. But, that that's a totally unrelated. But the Mantis will continue to grow, continue to expand. And from there, much stuff happens. 
during the Destroyer War, the Mantis sailed down to the, uh, the Ivory Kingdoms. Now, previously, they'd been doing operations down the Iron Ivory Kingdoms. And one of their previous champions had left a small settlement there. And when the Mantis came down to the Ivory Kingdoms, they found that small settlement had grown and had built up a massive fleet, the Fourth Storm. Because every Mantis fleet is called a storm. And with that, they did investigations down there, found out what happened. Found out that pretty much everyone in the Ivory Kingdoms had been sacrificed to summon Kali Ma and the Destroyers. Yeah, that was not pleasant for them. But... They set up that area. They set up those colonies. The support back and forth. Their ships going back and forth. Carrying supplies. Carrying people as the age of exploration began. And that ultimately was what the Mantis did. The Mantis kind of have a job that they officially patrol the lands not controlled by other clans. But they kind of just keep to the sea. Mostly because they've gotten in trouble following their mandate because the other clans get a little bit nervous with armies marching near their borders. It's kind of understandable. But, that said, that is a brief overview of the Mantis. I skipped a lot of details, like, you know, their wars against the Phoenix. Their wars against the Phoenix. Mantis and Phoenix don't get along very well for a number of reasons. But, this is just more to give an overview, and that's pretty much the Mantis. So, next week, I talk about the last of the Great Clans. The final Great Clan to be recognized. The Spider Clan. So until then, I'd like you all to remember to have fun and keep gaming.